What are the challenges that the next big thing, the future of aquaculture, meets? And what is holding technology back? Let's check in with Juliet and let her ask the questions. Here at Aquanor, we are surrounded by new ideas and technologies, but I'm going to go find the next big thing. As with everything else, you can't get away from AI and uh, automations, and fish welfare is something that we have to focus on. Well, going into deeper seas is the next big thing, I think, and uh, building construction, building nets, building things that can be in that harsh, harsh environment. Take the farms further out uh, in the sea and also sink them deeper. It's not so much uh, lies when you get uh, cages uh, more under the water. Higher technology RAS uh, systems, uh, which take more consideration to fish welfare. Probably uh, IA, but if it can help uh, the fish welfare, because that is something we, we need to take control over. I think there's a lot of technology that comes across every year and there's a lot of development, but I think our industry is still slow in adopting the technology. And so I think we need to do a better job of educating the farmers on the benefits. The overwhelming issue is to prevent and combat listeria. What do you think is the next big thing? Uh, I would think the more and more they will do it from the office where they are located and uh, not on site, but uh, remote location. Well, I can't say anything else than probiotics because I mean we've seen that in other livestock productions where pro probiotics are, are more important and a, an important standard part of treatment. All the industry we're very focused on biosecurity so the focus is always on uh, safety production, biosecurity, fish welfare. What you see now is an amazing amount of technology, hardware, but biology is still the key to, to solving and lifting this industry. Thank you, Juliet. We will now uh, dive deeper into the problem of lice. And I'm here with Associated Professor Anne Solvang Botnes from the Norwegian University of Science and Techno Technology and you are in the group Task Force Salmon Lice. What is the main purpose of this task force? Well, it was established as an um, industry initiative uh, with funding from the industry as well as NTNU and uh, the research funding here in Norway. Uh, and we wanted to investigate um, and learn more about the Laos problem, um, develop the knowledge base uh, and cooperate with the industry on these issues. And what does research tell us about the most effective and sustainable way of treating this? Well, um, normally we divide the measures uh, into preventive and treating methods. And the preventing is, of course, the most um, beneficial for the fish, obviously. Um, because then you stop the parasite from eating the host. And this can be done in many different ways, uh, like uh, uh, using lice skirt to prevent uh, the parasite from entering the cage. And one of the newest um, methods is the submerging the cages into yeah. depths below 20 meters. And we've done some research on this. And uh, for instance, the numbers show that the um, number of delousing is uh, reduced by 90%. Lowering the cages to under the belt where the, where the lice thrives. Yeah. And there are also other uh, very interesting measures, you, uh, for instance the laser that yeah. you can put into the cages. Um, in the, it's also kind of treating the fish but without handling and all these procedures. So it's very beneficial and um, there's not so much published no knowledge yet, but it's very uh, experience shows that it might be effective and it's very promising, I think. Where do we see the biggest knowledge gap in uh, battling uh, this problem? Mm -hmm. I would like to start with the sea lice biology, so basic knowledge on how this organism works. Uh, we still lack knowledge on uh, behavior, on genetics, but also we need to know more about um, uh, the effect on the wild fish populations. Also documenting new methods, and I also think the, um, there is a lot of knowledge that is not taken into use. So farmers can be better at using existing knowledge. Yeah, and Anna, if you come up with some good ways of making this less a problem it's going to be enormous uh, effects on 
how much fish we can produce in uh, our waters. Mm, absolutely, and I think um, I still think we have something to work with as it is now. Uh, for instance, the fish farmers uh, need to know more about their locations. So. Uh, all the measures we have, they work in different ways. Uh, they work in different uh, degrees in different locations. So maybe we could be better at using the location-specific knowledge uh, when we combat the, the sea lice. And the task force and the battle goes on. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Anna. Uh, next, we will see one of the methods that has been introduced in battling the lice. We have been given research and science on the problems with lice, and now I'm here with Jon Arne Breivik, Stingray Marine Solutions. That's correct. You are combating lice. We're absolutely doing that, and we're doing that with lasers. Yeah, and uh, first time you were at Aquanur is some uh, more than 10 years ago. Yeah, that's, uh, that was back in 2013. We came here, we were very modest, trying to tell uh, the industry what we were going to do, shooting sea lice with lasers, and most people laughed at us. But we went away with the Aquanor Innovation Prize in 2013. And, and this goes to show, if you win the Innovation Award, this is what can happen to you. How did, how did it start? During Christmas 2009, that time we, we were using medicine in the industry, and uh, there was resistance to medicine A, medicine B, and medicine C. And uh, my colleague Espen Beck was reading about this, and we have been working with underwater technology for many years. And uh, he said that it might be inspired by his childhood, because then he was using a magnifying glass to kill ants. <laughs> so he just came up with the idea, why don't we shoot this with laser? And the day after, he couldn't sleep, so he was thinking, I need to go into all the patents and see if there's any patent registered for this. And obviously there weren't. <laughs> 15 years later, we are more than 250 people in Singre now. Wow. And we are uh, deployed in more than 130 fish farms in Norway alone. There are many, many, many initiatives on killing the lice and getting rid of that problem because it's extremely costly for the farmers. How do you see these methods working together and what will, what will be the end game with the lice? Even us can say that there is only one single bullet, right? Silver bullet. Yeah. So you need to have different methods and uh, hopefully uh, the laser solution will be one of them that are crucial to have control in the industry. The most important thing over the 10 years that we have been commercial have been really to take away some of the handling of the fish. Yeah. Because quite a few of the other methods requires handling. There were four to 5,000 mechanical treatments for many years now, every year in Norway alone. And it has been so important for us to take down that number, to get better control over the sea lice. And believe it or not, we detect and remove one sea lice out of time. But we can do five per second from every laser that we have. And we do now have 2,300 lasers being operative, and they are on 24 seven. And more than that, they are also becoming what we call the fish health hub. So we monitor the fish welfare and, and have a platform for fish welfare. I wish you uh, luck here at uh, Aquanur. Thanks a lot. I am sure that uh, you are being received in a different way than in 2013. I definitely know so. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Further on in this program, we will go more into lice treatment and also land-based salmon. But before this, we are going to visit the next generation. There are fantastic ideas at Aquanur uh, 2025, like shooting lice with uh, lasers, but there is also the next big thing, the next generation here. And uh, Sonia and Gabriel, you have a stand at the exhibition and you've started your own company, even though you are 17 and 18. Yes. <laughs> Sonia, yeah. what's the story behind uh, Salmon Solutions? So we go an entrepreneurship program at Tora Storm High School and uh, it started that in first class we needed an idea 
and my father is a senior researcher at Sintef. So I asked him for failed ideas yeah. and he told me about this one and he said that he had uh, spoken to Sintef Ocean about it, but they rejected it because of the additive he was suggesting. Um, so with my limited knowledge, I asked ChatGPT for like, okay, but additives without that issue. And when I showed him the list that AI made up, um, <laughs> he was very positive and he was like, okay, I think you're onto something. And you know, he has a PhD within this. So when he has faith, we have faith, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and Gabriel, what is the business uh, plan? What well, do you want to do? Yeah, well, the problem that we're trying to solve is um, uh, fish welfare during flush delousing. And one of the problems of during flush delousing is the high pressure that the salmon is flushed with. So what we do is we add a biodegradable and safe additive to the flushing water, which changes the uh, uh, physical components of the water, which, allow, which makes the water more effective, which allows us to reduce the pressure that we flush the salmon with uh, while reducing the damages done. So we can delouse it as effective, but with less damages. How have you been received here at Aquanua, Sonia? Uh, we feel like we've been met with very positive uh, and, you know, interested uh, reactions. Uh, I feel like people take us more seriously now that we are exhibitors and they uh, hear about Sintef and, you know, they, we have at our stand, we show them that we can drink the additive and we also show them our proof of concept and that Sintef has made a uh, CFD analysis for us. And of course, the limiting factor is our age too, because when people see us, they automatically assume that we're students, we don't know anything, and we, and we don't, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, <laughs> but you have a good idea. Well, we have a yes, good idea, we and we, gotta get, we get a lot of good help because we're so young. When will you be in operation with this uh, fantastic method? Well, our goal is 2027, yeah. uh, but we have a very, very long um, research phase, and we have a lot of steps left before, uh, we can, um, before market launch and commerciality. We are dependent on getting help from bigger companies that is already established. Yeah. So we've been in dialogue with a couple of them and they seem very like willing to help. We need uh, start a startup capital to you know, uh, do the actual research we need to do. Yeah. Uh, so that's our, our next step, our problem right now. You seem like you have a later base that is uh, really credible. And I look forward to in two years time, the <laughs> next Aquanur. Yeah. Aquanur. 2027 to see this method presented here with a huge stand. Yes. <laughs> that's the, go that that's the goal. goal. That's the goal. That's yes. the goal. And in the meantime, we are going to look at one of the lice uh, beating uh, alternatives that are already out there Harbor Fence in a little while. Stay tuned for part three. <laughs> 